Today we're going to take a look at the ions and their charges. Ions are usually used to refer to charged particles that are formed in an ionic bond. In the other tutorials down below, you'll be able to learn about how to name compounds, specifically compounds that are ionically bonded, covalently bonded, or both. And the example of that is looking at polyatomic ions and how they are bonded with other um, charged particles. So in this specific tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to figure out the charge of these ions and what do ions even mean. Ions are charged particles. This means that on the periodic table, all of the elements are neutrally charged. They're not charged, they're neutral. But when they participate in some sort of a bond, then the electrons are either being given away or being taken by one of the elements that are part of the bond. So when that happens, then these atoms now either become positively charged or become negatively charged. And when that happens, then we call these ions. You can have an atom that is positively charged. This means that they are losing electrons and they are known as cations. Anions are the ones that are negatively charged and this means that they are gaining electrons. This is very counterintuitive. You would think, oh, if something is negatively charged, then they're probably losing. But in this case, when we see something that's an, it's kind of like an anti, it's a prefix. So this prefix tells us that it's negative and cat is positive. But when it's positive, it's losing electrons, not gaining. And anions are gaining electrons, not losing. Ionic bonds are formed between a metal and a non-metal. A metal is usually found on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Left-hand side means the left of this staircase right here. So the left of the staircase, these are all metals, including this section right here, which is the transition metal section. Anything to the right of the staircase are predominantly non-metals. We have groups, which means that they go down. They are columns on a periodic table. And we have periods, which means that they are rows. They go across. So when we refer to period three, then it means row three. When we say group eight, this is group eight, column eight. When we take out this transition metal section, the way we number these groups are group one, Group two, group three, group four, group five, six, seven, and eight. Group one has one valence electron. Valence means the outer shell. Group two means it has two electrons in its outer shell. Group three, three electrons in its outer shell. Group four, four electrons. Group five, five electrons, six, seven, and eight. Once you reach eight electrons in your outer shell, you have a full outer shell. When the outer shell is completely full, this tells you that it is stable. There are two types of charged particles that could occur with all these atoms. You have fixed charges and you have variable charges. Fixed charges just means that it's always going to be this charge. It's a fixed number. Fixed charges, we look simply on the periodic table. Fixed charges means that these groups, group one, group two, group eight, seven, some of six, some of five, and some of three are fixed charges. So this means that group one are always going to be plus one charge. This means when they form bonds, group one are always going to the elements in group one are always going to lose one electron. They're always going to form a cation. Group twos are always with two valence electrons in the outer shell. They're always going to lose two electrons. Group three, you have two examples where it's usually losing three electrons. Group eight, like we know it, has eight electrons in its outer shell. It's full and it's happy, so it doesn't really have a charge. It's a, new, it's a neutrally charged atom. Group seven has 
a negative one charge, which means that it is able to gain one electron. Group six gain two electrons, group five gain three electrons. If you think about it, group seven means that it has seven electrons in its outer shell. So in order to make it to eight electrons, it needs one more electron. So that's why it likes to steal. It likes to take one electron from another atom. Group six has six electrons already in its outer shell. So it just needs two more to be stable. So that's why it likes to take, it likes to gain electrons. So group sixes also form anions. Variable charges are the ones that may have more than one charge. Those are usually in the transition metal section. So in the transition metal section here, there are a few key variable charged uh, metals that you should be aware of. You have copper, nickel, iron, tin, and lead. This sign here just means or, so copper could have a plus one charge or a plus two charge, depending on who copper ends up bonding with. Nickel, two or th plus two or plus three, same with iron, and you have your tin and you have your lead, which are all both either plus two charge or plus four charges. There are three fixed charge exceptions um, in the transition metal section that you need to be aware of. That is silver always has a plus one charge, zinc always has a plus two charge, and aluminum always has a plus three charge. So these three, aluminum, zinc, and silver, are not variable charged metals. They are fixed charged metals. And these fixed charged metals hold charges of plus one, plus two, and plus three. These are the only exceptions.